going to have all the thrills and chills that you would expect from a big adventure. The stunt work on this was, was way, way more intense than anything I've done before. But uh, I'd say the most difficult thing was just remembering all of the moves in terms of the sword fights. So we circle. Sorry, once again. They were more kind of precise. They was more involved for these specific beats. That dog's recircle. This was definitely very demanding for everyone. One, two, three. Ah, that was all. I'm the sword master, and I started in 1952 with Errol Flynn on the Master of Ballantrae. That gives me 50 years of service in the film industry. You name a, a sword fighting sequence that blew your mind in any huge movie, it was Bob. In, out, in, out. Screen fighting is uh, choreographed stuff which both combatants know about and uh, they make it as large as they can so that it is picked up by the audience. Bob Anderson understood acting with a sword. He said, just because it gets faster doesn't mean to say it's better. He said, you know that as an actor, it's the beats in between. And... You're taught to hold it. Then you're taught how to use it. Attacking, you use the front edge of the blade. When you parry, which is defense, you use the strong part of the blade, which is there. No. Once you know where to put your sword at the right time and place, that is the beginning of it. The routine now has to be rehearsed so it can be done with speed and agility and feeling and timing. It's like muscle memory, you know, your, mu your muscles have memory in the same way that your brain does. So when you're learning a sword routine, you kind of go over the routine numerous times in order to, for it to sort of sink in. It was interesting because I kind of learned the choreography to these things before I actually knew the character fully. So it was kind of interesting to uh, incorporate the character into the, into the moves. When I had my meetings with uh, Gore, he presented his concept and uh, I got excited listening to Gore explain his vision of the project because he has the, the energy of, of a little kid. I loved Captain Blood, Crimson Pirate, um, you know, all of those movies. It's just that there's something about piracy. Welcome aboard the Black Pearl. I think what's fun about the, the first big sword fight between Orlando and, and Johnny is it's the kind of classic first set piece. And we're having a lot of fun with it, but there's no doubt that at any moment someone could lose an ear. You all right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's good as gold. We go through an exhaustive uh, rehearsal process with everybody, and it's it's pretty intimate. What I call my quiet time with the actors, where we talk things through and, and take sort of a low-key internal approach to it. It's one thing to to learn the choreography of a, of a stunt action or a sword fight or a fight or, or whatever it is, but then then they have to start coloring it with their characters. And I try to let the actors do that from day one. And that's how the collaborative effort starts rolling. You like pain? <laughs> try wearing a corset. When I first read the script, I was like, oh, this is going to be easy. I'll, I'll sit in the back of carriages. I'll wear pretty dresses. I'll pout a bit. You know, it'll be fine. But actually, I've had a lot of stunt work to do, um, which, for somebody as lazy as me, has been rather challenging. I've been standing on this plank for two days, absolutely petrified. I mean, completely petrified. So when the time came to jump off, Gore, the director, said to me, um, you know, you don't have to do this. We can, we can get Sonia, your stunt girl, to do it. I was like, I've been standing up here for two days. Do you really think that I'm not going to jump off this thing? I think I came up smiling, actually. It was fantastic. I was just so glad that I had hit the water and I was still alive and that a shark hadn't jumped out and eaten me. You know, it was great. You have to really be true to the genre and you have to deliver the great sword fight. The film has its big set pieces sort of spread out. There's an attack on the town, Jack's escape. There's a huge boat-to-boat -boat battle sequence. And then there's kind of a sneak attack on the, on the Dauntless at the, in the climax of the third act. When the Dauntless battle begins, all the pirates are skeleton in that. So we shoot it live, and then we do reference passes with nobody there, where the uh, opposition has to fight air. Our stunt coordinator was really great at choreographing these sequences. It's very difficult for his team and ultimately cameramen as well to 
set a composition, photograph it with the British Navy, let's say, and the pirates, and then remove the pirates. And so not only are you photographing air, you're also kind of thinking, okay, that's the moment where that guy hits that guy, and then I'm going to pan over to this skeleton who's not there. It was like a choreographed dance with all these stun guys beating themselves up, basically, with these imaginary opponents. It's like you've been learning a tango with someone for a month, and then they go, OK, now do it without your partner. And you just feel like an idiot, um, you know, kind of lunging at midair. It was so much fun, really. I mean, we're making a pirate movie here. It's like, you know, it's like every boy's dream. I think it provides all of the kind of things you'd expect from a Bruckheimer picture. Um, yet it tapped into something, I, I don't know, something, you know, again, that sort of nine-year-old, you know, that's still there. We all understood that we wanted to capture the feeling of, the, of this epic pirate thing, but we all uh, agreed that, that we're going to take a fresh approach to this, something that, that'll be generational, something that'll, that'll last. That's not very nice. 